As we're gathering, I appreciate everyone spacing out and continuing to follow our good protocols and guidelines. We are gathered here to, for a very important celebration of life, but we also want to continue to follow the protocols that have allowed us to succeed as a university this year. So I appreciate everyone following those and continuing those and spacing out, maintaining good distance. Uh, one of the things that I am very proud of is that you all have succeeded in continuing your studies during a pandemic. That's an achievement that you can all be proud of. We're here to celebrate Brandon, and as we do so, I appreciate continuing those good practices, but also we celebrate you and the achievement of this year. We have a lot to be grateful for. Thank you for coming. You see we have tissues available. If it's perfectly okay to cry. God gave us tear ducts. God expects us to use them. So please feel free. There will be time for laughter, time for tears. That's the fullness of life. In the celebration of life, it's the greatness of the wonderful. The things we celebrate, it's also the sad. So grace to you and peace, and welcome to this service, this celebration of Brandon Lee White. I want to thank the family for being here, coming all the way down, and receiving family, receiving as brothers, the brothers and all who care for you all. Thank you for being here with us tonight, and thank you for sharing Brandon with us. The family is a family of prayer, they're a Christian family, so as appropriate, I'm going to start us off with a word of prayer. At the end of the prayer, I'll say, I'll let all God's children say, I invite you all to respond, amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the blessings that Brandon brought into this world. We thank you for the way you blessed him with family and friends, especially his brothers. Help us this evening to share stories, to understand, to understand who he was, what difference he made to so many people. Help us to cry, help us to laugh, help us to celebrate his life. Be with us through this ceremony and this time where we draw together as family and let all God's children say, Amen. So we have worked through our COVID protocols and those who come to speak at the microphone are invited to come and remove the mask and then put it on when you're done. Later in, this, in the celebration, there'll be a time for everyone to share stories. There's microphones there, there, and here. If you have a story of Brandon, something silly, something fun, something serious, please consider sharing it. I think I can speak for the family to say, they're nodding their heads, they say, yeah, it means a lot. So, as you feel comfortable, later in the service, we'll have a chance to do that. Okay? Again, you can come to the microphones, remove the mask to speak, put it on when you're done. I'd like, if I may, to get us started by going to the end and then going back to the beginning and finding ourselves where we are tonight. So the end. I mentioned a family is a Christian family, so there is, the end is not the end. There is eternal life. And as we've been talking, we've talked about Brandon as a child of God. He's God's first. And so we know that the family believes and we trust in a world beyond this. And there's hope and knowledge that Brandon is looking down on this and trying to make sense of it all. And we know that his sorrows and suffering and pain is past, and then now he knows joy and he knows peace. That's where he is, that's where he is headed. And as a matter of belief, many people believe that too. So go back to the beginning. How did Brandon get here? I want to share just a couple words. We went to his admissions file. And I don't know if you all remember Amy Griffin. Does that name ring a bell? Yeah. So here's a copy of the letter she wrote to help bring him here. And she wrote, well, first of all, there's this long list of everything that he did, and I don't, you must have been exhausted as his mother, just, he was doing lots. <laughs> he was doing, that's a long list. It would put all of us to shame, let's be clear. 
Letter concludes, Brandon will continue his strong work ethic and be an asset to your program as he has been to Cumberland County Public Schools. Your presence here tonight is witness to the truth of that statement. Another person you may have heard of, the family, have you guys ever heard of Michael Giles or Giles? He also wrote a letter about Brandon. And you were sharing earlier that even during the summer, he was a robotics nerd and was just, Michael mentions that. During the FRC off season, he continued to develop the team. And he went back even further, talked about meeting him in soccer, saying even at a young age, he showed determination, competitiveness, and focus. Characteristics have only grown as he has matured into the bright young man he is today. So that was that relationship that you guys found so important. So that's how Brandon came here. Though there is that other story which we should mention, I think you shared, is when he came here for an orientation trip and just to get to know the school, the family shared that right away he was starting to talk with whoever the, the welcome ambassador was, the, the, the host. And I think you said he finally found someone who could speak his language, right? So whether you spoke the language of someone who loved his field or where you spoke the language of brotherhood, you helped give him a home. And I know for every parent who has ever sent a child to school, you want to know your son, your daughter has a home. So thank you for giving Brandon a home. And how about you all? Many of you all have made a huge difference already in sharing stories with one another and with the family. I'm very grateful for that. I'd also like you to attend to yourself. One of the brothers used the word desolation in describing how he felt. That's where many of you are. I would encourage you to think about that. By going into your own sorrow, your own loss, your own pain, you can recognize it in someone else. If you never go into your own loss, your own sorrow, your own pain, how are you going to recognize it in a friend or a sister or a brother? It's hard. It is difficult. One of the hardest things you'll ever do. But when you do it, you'll find your own heart and you'll find that you can find someone else and you'll see someone else years from now and you'll say, I know what that's like. Because I've been there, and I've felt it in the depth of my soul. Let me give you a hug. Once you know a pain in yourself, you can recognize it in others. Let that be one of the gifts that come out of this very difficult time. Thank you all. Thank you all so much for coming. At this time, we'll have a series of, of words from our leadership here at Ruby Riddle. And then we'll um, want to, Nicholas Damiano from Greek Life will speak, and then we'll have a time for the brothers to share, and then ultimately a time for everyone to share. But first, Dean Lisa Kohler, please. You know, I think this is the hardest part of being a dean of students. And I share in the grieving for Brandon. It is my hope that with Tom, family, and friends, that we all find peace and understanding with his loss. To Brandon's family, thank you for sharing the wonderful stories with me this afternoon. I want you to know that he will not be forgotten. He will always be an Embry-Riddle Eagle, and he will always be a part of our community, especially our Greek community. We thank you for sharing with him with us. I also want you to know that you're welcome to come visit any time and that you will always be a part of our family.
Strepo, SGA president, also has some words that she would like to share. And we should thank the SGA for all the work they've been doing and helping to make this, this evening possible. Thank you, Yolanda. Thank you everyone for being here. I think all of us here today shows how big of a support system and how big of an impact Brandon White had on all of us. As we know, BY had a way of bringing people together and making them feel special. BY was always willing to do anything and everything. He loved watching rocket launches, the Packers, and just being with his friends. From singing karaoke with his brothers to doing homework with all his friends in space flight, BY had a way of bringing different groups of people together. He reached out and brought others together, no matter the circumstances, as just friends. He cherished every one of his friendships and any new stories he learned. He never stopped meeting new people and gaining new friends. He truly upheld Fiji's friendship, the sweetest influence, and stands as an epitome of what it means to be an eagle today. Now we are all here today doing the same thing. While BY may not be here, he will still be with us and forever will be. Everyone here just gained the best angel possible to, to look over us. Thank you. Thank you, Johan. And President Butler, please come and share some words. Thank you. I too want to extend my thanks to everyone here. It's uh, pretty amazing to look around. I think for the, especially for the family right now. You know, um, going off to college, you meet a lot of friends that are with you for life. It's, it's a really special time. Many of you have maybe only experienced a couple of years of that, maybe some of you four years, depending on where you are. And you sort of expect those people to be um, people that you're going to remember those times that you had playing sports, uh, watching TV, whatever it is, and you do. I mean, you go on through life, you separate, you go different ways, you may get back together on campus for homecoming, but you do remember the people that you went to school with like, like family. And um, while Brandon isn't with us, I know that when you folks think about your time in college, the fun times, the things that you did, the people you met from all over the world. Um, his, his memory will still be there, I can guarantee you. It's going to be difficult, but it'll be there. So I want you to keep that in mind. To the family from the whole university, I want to share our sorrow. Uh, I want to thank you for sharing him with us for, for the time that he was here. It was uh, it's a really special family here at Embry-Riddle, and, and uh, to have Brandon as part of that is, is really something special. We have something we want to share with you now, and I'd like to ask the provost, Lon Moeller, to come up. Lon. Well, we're learning tonight how proud Brandon was to be at Embry-Riddle Eagle. And we're learning tonight how important it was for him to earn his degree from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. And you're also hearing about the positive impact Brandon had on his classmates, the staff, and faculty of this university. And because of that impact, President Butler and I are very honored to present to Brandon's family the thing he was working so hard to earn, his degree from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Thank you, President Butler, and thank you, Provost Mola. One of the things that I think I can share with everyone, uh, with the conversations we had in preparing for this, was that, for those of you who know Brandon, who was started his freshman year, he had a rough start. Many of you here have probably had a rough start. But he turned around, he got his act together, and he was on a great trajectory. And we celebrate those of you who will be graduating with great GPAs, 
but gosh, we celebrate the student who gets a rough start and gets it together and gets on the right track. That deserves celebration as much as the highest GPA. And he, that's what he did. And he it was so clear as we reviewed that. And thank you to Provost Muller and President Butler for going through that process. And we really do celebrate someone who has that persistence you talked about. So, Nicholas Damiano, you got to know him very well, didn't you? Good evening, everyone. My name is Nicholas Damiano, and it is an honor and deep privilege to serve as the Assistant Director of Fraternity and Sorority Life here at ERAU. On behalf of the Student Engagement and Student Union Office and the over 500 fraternity and sorority students in our community, I thank you all for being here this evening to honor our own, Brandon Lee White. For those who are here with us in the Union, to those joining us on Zoom, Virginia, South Florida, California, wherever, this is what Brandon would have wanted, everyone coming together. I have worked with this vibrant, vibrant and dedicated community of leaders for now 10 months. This fraternity and sorority community is truly a unique one. The way they band together to take care of their own is truly miraculous. This not only spans our community, but alumni who have, might have never crossed paths with those who, are there, who, who they are supporting. This is a testament to our resilience of being here at ERAU for 50 years as of 2021. Every year, this community raises over $100,000 for various organizations, clocks in over 3,500 service hours, and the FSL community GPA has consistently for the past seven years been above the all-campus GPA average. Brendan was a part of this. Besides all, these, all of these amazing things we do, this community boils down to one ideal, and you've all heard me say this, it is finding our forever family. To quote United States Vice President Th Thomas Riley and a Phi Gamma Delta, the forces that had been the greatest in my life had been God and the college fraternity that molded me. When I, when I first met Brandon White, I instantly noticed the love he had for his fraternity and his own family back home. He embodied all the values of Fiji. Whenever he spoke with me, he listened with intent and always focused on the conversation. Every time I ran into him, he ensured that he stopped and said hi, even if only for a moment. That is rare these days, stopping to ask, how are you doing? What's on your mind? These brief moments, which were many, many, are the ones that I will close, uh, hold close to my heart for the years to come. His dedication to helping others was exemplary, and everyone noticed it. One evening, I attended a Theta Phi Alpha chapter meeting where Brandon and another Fiji were in attendance, coaching them for their fundraising for the Fiji Diamond Girl competition, which, by the way, Fiji raised over $19,000 for the USO. Brandon was a part of this. The way Brandon spoke with the women and strived to support their fundraising reminded me why I love doing this job every single day. It is supporting your own community and our Embry-Riddle community. I am lucky to have been inspired by him. Phi Gamma Delta Executive Director Emeritus William Zerman Sr. stated, give more than they ask, give what they expect, and then some. Well, we all know Brandon embodied this Fiji wisdom beautifully, and I hope we all take this lesson from him moving forward. Before I end my, before I end my time speaking, I would like to share two things. First. Brandon was an important piece of the fabric of, this, uh, of, this, of his fraternity, and that means a part of our fraternity and sorority family. Next week, I will be creating a custom-made Phi Gamma Delta jersey with the nickname B. White on the back of the jersey and under it bearing the letters F-I-J-I. This will be framed and hung in the Fraternity and Sorority Life office so generations of FSL members remember our friend Brandon White for the years to come. Secondly, I spent a good while in the Fiji books, articles, and readings on what Brandon would want all of you to hear. When reading the Purple Pilgrimage, it was bittersweet that the last page is one that made me go, okay, Brandon, I see you, I see you. 
The one thing that Brandon always practiced is persistence. Brandon will look at every single one of you and say, keep going. Just earlier today, I spent time with Brandon's amazing family. I was honored. And we were finding words to describe him. I said, Brandon was persistent. His mother looked me right in the eyes and said, a year ago, I posted a status where she said the words, my son is persistent. With this being said, to the gentlemen of Fiji and the family of Brandon White, I leave with you this quote from the President of the United States and brother of Phi Gamma Delta, Calvin Coolidge. Nothing in the world can take place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The, word, the world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan, press on, has solved and will always solve the problems of the human race. Brandon, we promise to press on always. Thank you. Now I would like to ask the brothers to speak. I know several of you have prepared some thoughts, and I can't stress enough how important they are. Uh, I think, George, you were going to go ahead and, and get us started. And then after they've had a chance to speak, again, we'll have a time for everyone to share a story. About Good evening, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to come and celebrate the life of Brandon White. Brandon was more than just a friend to us. He was a brother. Known around here as B. White, and he was an extremely active member of the interfraternal community and well known by much of the student body. He exemplified not only the values of Fiji, but the values of what makes a true, excellent gentleman. When I met him, I thought he was just a goofball from Virginia. When I got to know him more, he was still a goofball from Virginia. <laughs> but he was also more than this. Brandon was someone who was caring to all that he met, always had a smile on his face, and was always creating memories with all those that were around him. He put the most effort into our chapter than any other brother that I've ever met, texting me constantly, sometimes too much, with ideas about brotherhood events. I have ne also never met someone that could talk to me for hours about one day becoming president of this great chapter, then five minutes later telling me he should have been a pike. <laughs> when the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, Jonathan loved him as his own soul. I now believe that since meeting and knowing Brandon, his soul has been knit within all of, our, all of us, so we love him as if he was ourselves. This being, we shall never forget the way he talks, laughs, the way he smiles, or even walks, because he is knit with the soul of each and every one of us in this room. There are two extremely important lessons that I've learned from Brandon, and I hope you can all take from this. Though we are in school to learn and work for our future, never let the hard work you do in college get in the way of making everlasting memories and bonding and making relationships with others. Because at the end of the day, when your course is run, it won't be the all-nighters you pulled studying for an exam that you, that you are remembered for. It's the spontaneous memories that you make with those around you that you are known for. Brandon was known for making memories, and those memories are ones that will last with all of us forever. So next time you get an invite to go out, and you might have a test the next day, go out. <laughs> the second lesson that I learned from Brandon, and this one might be the most important lesson, is that blue raspberry four locos really aren't that bad. I'll end with this. 
May the star of Brandon's life disappear, but not like the star of the evening, which sinks unheroically into the west, but like the star of the morning, whose light is only taken over by that of greater, brighter light. May we all strive for higher scholarship, more knowledge and excellence for Brandon, because that's what he would want. So we shall press on for him. I am beyond proud to be able to call Brandon my brother. And I am proud to be a Fiji. Thank you. Thank you, George. And we should all thank George and the leadership in Fiji who've been working incredibly hard over the last several days. Not easy, but you've done it. And thank you. Thank you for all the, the leadership that, that you brought to tonight. Thank you so much. Ricardo, I think you were going to speak next. Uh, I want to first thank uh, the administration and everybody who uh, made this possible. Um, I want to thank everyone for being here. Uh, I know it's difficult. Um, I know. Uh, a lot of us uh, are still processing, um, and uh, I, it shows a lot of courage uh, to show up um, for your brother and your friend, uh, and I appreciate it. Um, I wrote uh, an open letter to Brandon. Um, it's, uh, it's hard to process, and I'm not going to pretend uh, just because I'm, I'm up here speaking. Um, I know exactly what to say because uh, it, it's hard to find what really someone means to you when. Uh, uh, you lose someone so quick. So um, these are just my thoughts, and I'd like to share them with you. Uh, dear Brandon, I miss you. There hasn't been a day yet where I don't wake up praying that this is all a bad dream. I have forever lost a brother, and I want you to know all the days we spent talking about the future will live on in my heart. Through all my grief, sorrow, and anger, I have found a new drive in my heart to tirelessly pursue my dreams as I know you would have. You had such high hopes for the future. You are and always will be a man that looked forward and not backward. You are a man that inspired others through your actions and your relationships. You are a man who gave a newfound appreciation on living every day to the fullest. Over the last few months, we grew close as friends. But overnight, we became brothers. And that will never change. The conversations we had about being better people, being a better man, and one day being a better father will never leave me. No matter what life threw at you, you always made the most out of it. Until, and still to this day, nothing changes. Marie, no words can do justice for what I want to say. First, I want you to know that I love you. Your son forever will live in my heart, and I mean that. For all the trials ahead, I know that he will be there for me and for everyone in this room, as he was for us in life. Again, um, I just want to say, uh, for everyone in this room, thank you for being here. Um, and for one last, I, I shared something with my brothers uh, when we were mourning. I said, um, Brandon uh, didn't really show his emotions uh, too well. And for those that you know, uh, that knew him, uh, he was a uh, he, he was pretty uh, stern about that. Um, he uh, he hid them very well. Um, and although uh, there's a time to be sad and there's a time to be angry, um, there's also a time to be strong. And uh, I know that uh, for me and, and and for everyone, he would want us to be strong right now. Um, 
so take the time that you need. Um, but for Brandon, press on and be strong. Thank you. Thank you, Ricardo. I think Craig, you were going to come speak. Thank you. Hello, all, and thank you again for being here tonight. It means a lot to us. Um, so, I met Brandon in the fall of 2019 during fraternity recruitment. And my first thought is, why is there a redneck with a Korean? <laughs> but Blake and B. White would soon to be two of our favorite members of our organization, and I was proud to call both of them my brother. While we as a chapter have had many Brandons, none have left their mark as much as Brandon White, or as we affectionately called him, B. White. B. White was loud, proud, and didn't care who knew. Every moment with him was a wild ride, and you never knew what to expect, except for one thing. You always knew that Brandon was damn proud to be a Fiji. Those five words, proud to be a Fiji, hold deep value to each brother as they're said at the end of each meeting by each brother. And B. White was no exception. He truly was proud of it, and he cared for this fraternity more so than any brother I know. The foundation of this fraternity is friendship, as we say, it's the sweetest influence. The great Irish poet William Butler Yeats said, think where man's glory both begins and ends, and say my glory was I had such friends. And friendship was Brandon's greatest glory. He meant so much to this chapter and so much to me. There isn't a single brother who doesn't have a story about B. White or a fond memory. His legacy will forever be that. He is eternally bound to each brother of this chapter and all members of Phi Gamma Delta. In 1852, four years after our founding, upon hearing the death of fellow Phi Gamma Delta founder Daniel Webster Crofts, founder Ellis Bailey Gregg wrote, man is heir to what? To sorrow, pain, and death. He is destined to die and to return to dust. The young, the aged, and the beautiful, death nips in the bud, and beauty and grace become wedded to the tomb. While these words are almost 170 years old, they still ring true. For as long as our fraternity has existed, the bonds of fraternal brotherhood have bound us all and will do the same for many men in the years to come. Brandon Lee White, you are my brother and friend, and I love you always. Ad Astra and press on. Thank you, Craig. Spencer, you forward. Hello, everybody. Uh, for those of you that know me, I'm from Maryland. Um, me and B. White would always bicker about which state was the better state. And, um, <laughs> and <laughs> the first time uh, I met B. White, uh, we were in the same pledge class together in the fall of 2019. And um, I remember, I can't remember what I said to him, but he said, you know, I don't really know how I feel listening to someone from Maryland because you guys can't really make up your mind. You had no idea which side to choose during the Civil War. <laughs> so, you know, that's the, uh, that's the type of uh, little arguments we would always get in. And, um, you know, I do, I do really miss him, but um, two of our very important values that I value the most are friendship and excellence. And, B. White embodied both of them. Um, for you Fijis that know, I was the Islander and Diamond Girl chair. And every single morning, I would wake up from a text from B. White saying, hey, who's winning on fundraising? How many points do we have? What can I do to get us above the other teams? That just goes to show how driven he was for this community and for our brothers. Um, I've never met a man like, the, like Brandon White, and he really 
has made me proud to be a Fiji, and he will always, always be my brother and always be in my heart. Thank you. Thank you, Spencer. Um, Eli, nice to meet you. Uh, thank you everyone for having me today to speak in the, for the memorial Brandon Lee White. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to thank the Embry-Riddle faculty for making this memorial possible, in addition to providing support and counseling services to those in need. I'd also like to thank the Assistant Director of Fraternity and Sorority Life, Nicholas Damiano, for his help during this difficult time. Uh, finally, I'd like to thank everyone who could be present with us today in celebration of Brandon's life. The official motto for the fraternity of Phi Gamma Delta, also known as Fiji, is friendship the sweetest influence. When I think of that quote, Brandon instantly comes to mind. Uh, he was always kind and loving to everyone around him. His spirit and energy was so contagious and vibrant. He was there for others in, in times of need, as well as being an awesome hangout buddy for Friday nights. I remember first meeting Brandon while I was under new member orientation for Fiji, and he and I clicked instantly. During my time as a new member, I told myself I could not wait until I became a full member and I would be able to call Brandon as my brother. Uh, one day we were uh, hanging out in, um, in, the, in the student lobby and we were just talking about like things that um, we had to memorize when we, uh, when we were little. I told him that uh, I had memorized the full Gettysburg Address and he didn't believe me. <laughs> so um, I ended up, uh, I recited to him like uh, from at that moment, and I remember him just absolutely uh, lo looking at me like, like absolutely amazed. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was, uh, it was definitely a funny moment. Um, the last I spoke with him was the night after I accepted full membership for Fiji. Uh, he and I were hanging out, and he told me, since I am now his brother, there would not be a thing in the world that he would not do for me. And I told him that I loved him and I appreciated him. I was very glad I was able to tell him those words. After Brandon's passing, I kept thinking of ways I could have told him how much he meant to me and to others. However, it does not do any good to look at the past, but instead to look at the future. Friends and family, take time to tell loved ones that they're appreciated and loved. I am so thankful to be a part of the f a fantastic community and to be a member of Fiji. Brandon, you are loved and missed by so many. I hope you are in a happy and beautiful paradise. Until then, my brother, thank you. Thank you, Eli. We'll hear from Manuel and then Kyle, and then we'll have a time for everyone to speak and share stories. So if you have a story to share, you'd like to th start thinking about sharing it, please do. But Manuel. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> they say you die twice. Once, they, once when they bury you in the grave, the second time, is the last time that someone mentions your name. Those lucky individuals that have gotten an opportunity to know Brandon have been given a responsibility for their friend, their brother. Through them, they can keep Brandon alive and well with stories about their adventures and memories with him, keeping Brandon alive with them for the rest of their lives. This responsibility also presents itself as a gift. When life gets rough, and it will, these lucky souls can reflect on what Brandon would have wanted, advised, or done in whatever situation life may present them. And the memory of Brandon will help guide these individuals towards greatness. When your time comes and you get to meet Brandon again, you could tell him about all the times he inspired you to do better, how he never left your thoughts, and how you lived the life to its fullest potential through his memory, constantly guiding you towards greatness. Thank you. Kyle. Mm -hmm. um, I want to thank everyone for coming out here um, to celebrate Brandon's life and to share our grief at his passing. My name is Kyle Garcia and I'm a senior here at Embry-Riddle. Um, Brandon and I were pretty close friends and brothers in Phi Gamma Delta. 
I appreciate the opportunity to talk tonight and share some of my thoughts on the exceptional man that we recently lost. Brandon was one of the most outgoing people that I have ever met. He was constantly creating new friendships and building upon those that he already created. Brandon lived life like it was a party, and always he was the life of the party. He had this way about him that it just felt good to be near him. His warm, goofy laugh and bright smile could not only light up a room, but the faces of every person in it. When Brandon smiled, you smiled. When Brandon laughed, you laughed. When Brandon spoke passionately about something, you couldn't help but be drawn in. One of the things I admire most about Brandon is that he was always himself. He was not a shy individual and certainly was not afraid of saying things people might disagree with. He always stood up for what he believed at, no matter the cost. Brandon was a natural born leader. From the events he put on for our brotherhood to becoming a coach in this most recent Diamond Girl competition, it was apparent that when Brandon set his sights on something, he did it with 110% effort. Brandon was driven beyond belief. If he wanted something to happen, God help us, it was gonna happen. Whether we liked it or not, he was gonna have his way. Brandon was insanely hardworking. He was ambitious. He was kind-hearted. He was passionate. He spewed spontaneity in a way, always looking for an adventure, the next big thing. For the size of Brandon's personality, it's easy to overlook the small things about Brandon that had impacted each and every one of us. From hearing his laugh from all the way across the room, to the pre his plethora of witty comments and funny jokes, or how he was always willing to put something important and personal down, just to take time out of his day to spend it with you. Sometimes it's the smallest things that we will miss the most. I'm going to miss him shouting at me about the place I grew up, Northern Virginia, and how it had no business being a part of his state. <laughs> I'm going to miss him making fun of me for liking things like poetry or rom-coms. I'm going to miss us talking about nothing for hours. I'm going to miss being able to look at him, say one word, and immediately we both start dying, mostly because we weren't supposed to be laughing about it. I'm going to miss his voice. I'm going to miss his laugh. I'm going to miss knowing that no matter what, he had my back. But most of all, I'm going to miss my friend. It's a tragedy that Brandon White is no longer with us. But while there's time to mourn and time to grieve, there too is time to reminisce fondly, to be thankful and to celebrate. I'm sure that in the next coming days, weeks, months, and years, that each and every one of you will grin and chuckle anytime Brandon White drifts across your mind. Be thankful that during his time here on earth that you were privileged enough to have crossed paths with such an outstanding individual. Honor him in all that you do, for he now lives on through each of us. And finally, I return to the fact that Brandon lived every day as if it was a party. It is only fair that we celebrate his, the life he left behind. God knows he would want us to. Um, that's everything I prepared. I wanted to share one poem um, before. I actually stumbled upon this poem, I don't even, just on accident. It wasn't like I was looking for it or anything. Um, but as soon as I read it, I felt like it resonated with me. Should you go first and I remain to walk the road alone, I'll live in memory's garden and happy days we've known. In spring I'll wait for roses red when fades the lilacs blue. In early fall when brown leaves call, I'll catch a glimpse of you. Should you go first and I remain for battles to be fought, each thing you've touched along the way will be a hollowed spot. I'll hear your voice, I'll see your smile, through blindly I may grope. The memory of your helping hand will buoy me with hope. Should you go first and I remain to finish with the scroll, no lengthening shadow shall creep in to make this life seem droll. We've known so much ha of happiness, we've had our cup of joy, and memory is one gift of God that death cannot destroy. Should you go first and I remain, one thing I'd have you do, walk slowly down that long long lone path for soon I'll follow you I'll want to know each step you take that I may walk the same for some day down the lonely road you'll hear me call your name thank you all for having me and I appreciate the time to speak
Thank you, Kyle. My, my family and I used to live in the same part of Virginia um, as Brandon, and he was right to be concerned about Northern Virginia and Maryland. <laughs> Time for just to share stories. If you have a story you'd like to share, um, if you'd like to, to go to one of the microphones, there's one there, or there, or here, uh, just come and share one of the stories, okay? And just, uh, just walk, follow each other and go up to a microphone and if you see someone standing, you want to go up to a microphone and wait until that person finishes, please do. It's just an open time to share some good stories. Everyone, you'll have to forgive me for not being able to speak as eloquently as my brothers have before me. But I hope what I can say will help bring some of you a little bit of closure. Um, Brandon wasn't alone when he closed his eyes for the last time. Ricardo and I were right there with him. He was listening to our voices in his room, talking until he fell asleep and we heard his snores. And I turned his light out at night. And I don't want to be selfish, but many, many, many times over since I've known him for the last few years, Brandon has said that I was his greatest friend that he's met here in Florida. Marie, instead of coming home to you for Thanksgiving, he was with me and my family. And so his memory and his name will live on with us. My family's devastated, just, just as you are and just as everybody in this room is. And damn, Brandon, I thought I knew a lot of people, but I think you got me beat, man. <laughs> oh my goodness. He, I think it just goes to show his character that the last conversation that we had, all he wanted from me was to be better. And there are things that I, I won't say, but there are, all he wanted was for me to be the best version of myself that I could possibly be. And I know that he wanted that for every single one of us, especially his brothers. It's why he put so much effort and so much time, so much passion, and so much love into everything that he did. And I'm so sorry for the loss of your son, and I feel guilty for it. And I know you don't want me to, and I know that I shouldn't, but he was my best friend in the entire world. And it happened like that. Overnight, he was my best friend. And so, please just keep him in your thoughts. Say his name, share a story of him every day because he would love this. He would love all these people talking about him. <laughs> he was never the center of attention, but he would love this. He's laughing it up right now. So please, just share his thoughts. If you can, reach out to anybody that you know that knew him and do the same. Just keep him with us because I miss him and I know all of you miss him too. And we can't have him back, but he's with us forever in our hearts. So thank you. Thank you all for being here, and um, to Brandon's family, thank you for making the journey down. It truly means a lot from the bottom of my heart. Um, I wrote some things briefly, actually, in the parking lot on the way here that were just off the top of my head um, to everyone up here as well. Um, just thank you for being present. I met Brandon back in the fall of 2019. His bi eventually big brother, Matt, um, I was roommates with him, and uh, even in our bare bones house that we were living in in Port Orange, he always managed to come down every weekend with a group of brothers and make sure to spend time with all of us. When I first met him too, as Nick said previously, while he had, um, you know, as everyone was saying, he had like a very tough exterior, almost like a wool trench coat, he very much within his heart and his character, it was like fine silk, fine purple silk for my brothers in the room. And 
things I will never forget about him, for example, is, is his high octane energy. It just could never be fizzled out. Um, seeing him and being in contact with him was like drinking five Red Bulls at once. Um, it always managed to keep you motivated and pumped for the day ahead. Didn't matter if it was 7 a.m. in the morning and I uh, had been up previous because of an exam or you know, morning formation or things like that, he was always there uh, making sure that I was doing well. Um, it even came to a boiling point when weekends he would come over with a couple of the other pledges and brothers and Matt would take the one futon in our living room and put it to the side and then throw me and Brandon a pair of boxing gloves and tell me, let's go. Uh, of course, I, I guess you taught him really well because he learned how to beat me down pretty quickly. So, um, The last conversation I had with him was last Monday and like many other conversations, um, you know, he obviously, he just asked how I was doing. I had a very full schedule this entire year, so, you know, my one regret will be not being with him enough, but he asked me and he was like, you know, I'm, I'm so happy to start seeing you around again. And, you know, he made sure to mention that he wanted to drive his, his calling that, you know, he had towards wanting to be, you know, in service to his country. And um, I know that that spirit I will use, and me and my other brothers here will use one once we get into um, our components and things like that, once we're either on the civilian side or military or whatever. Um, and um, with that as well, I will never forget his laugh. It was very hearty, of course, and uh, I will never forget his accent as well. Being a uh, Southern Virginian man, it was, it, I mean, one perfect example I will give will be during our uh, casino cruise that we did on the water and us getting home to the parking lot at 3 a.m. in the morning. He very, you could very much hear the dropping of his R's and, and sounds because of how tired everybody was. So, you know, uh, he, he very much, he very much, you know, I will always remember that. And um, one thing I was always concerned about, you know, upon his passing, as a, as a brother in Fiji and also a brother in Christ, I didn't have my doubts, but I had my concerns about his spiritual journey. Um, he was not a perfect man, he was very far from it, but in that, we're all not perfect in this room. And, um, he, but he always strived and always drove to be better. And I think, you know, within our faith, there's a difference between a purpose and a calling. A calling is kind of like your vocation, but his purpose was like Christ's purpose. It's that he came down here and he loved everybody with no judgment, no concern, and just loved up on everybody. And that is what I will always remember about him. The last thing I will say is I, I took a verse out of First Corinthians, um, that I thought you would, you would treat well also as a brother in Christ, you know, for me. Um, and for our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, the scripture will be fulfilled. And they say, O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death and the law that gives sin its power, but thank God for he has given us victory over sin and death through our Lord Christ. It stings, it hurt the morning I found out, it hurt sitting in the driveway, bawling my eyes out, getting ready to go speak with all the brothers, but I know in the end that he won. He was victorious because in the end of it all, he loved people, and he loved all of us more than himself. And for that, I, I will never forget that. I will continue to love him, and when I come home, back here 20 years from now with my kids, I will make sure to step in that office and show them the jersey and tell them about the life that he had. So with that, I love all of you. Thank you for being here to the faculty. Thank you again, and from the bottom of my heart, I am so sorry, and thank you all.
I'm from a lot of time you snap, but where I'm from, they also say, preach it, brother. So thank you. Others, if you like, please come to the microphone. I think there's also a microphone on the second floor for those of you who would like to go and talk, I think, toward the center there. But please, what stories do you have? What memories? What all would you like to share? Also, I noticed you had a candle, right? So if you, we have, we'll, uh, later tonight, we'll light candles. We'll do that toward the end. But uh, if you don't have a candle, we'll try to get some candles out to folks, right? So, but please, come into a microphone and please share a story. I'll always remember the conversation I had with B. White two Halloweens ago while we were Pledge Brothers together. The conversation was a little one-sided, <clears throat> seeing that B. White spent 30 minutes talking about being Fiji's chapter president one day to then conclude his pitch by stating that he should have rushed Pike. <laughs> little did I know that that little statement would be a glimpse into the inner fraternal passion that B. White had embodied. Every event, whether last minute or planned, B. White was there. For the past couple of days, all I could think was when B. White was gonna show up and get the party started. It's probably the first time I've ever been surrounded by my brothers and he wasn't one of them in the presence. But for anyone who has been lucky enough to have a late night rant or chat with B. White, you may have taken notice of the twinkle in his eyes when he spoke about something that he was passionate about. And while I never will be able to see that twinkle in the eyes of B. White, through all the tears, sadness, and hugs, I have been able to see that twinkle in the eyes of my brothers and my peers around me. He'll live on in that twinkle, and his light will forever be eternal in our hearts. Um, thank you for everyone who showed up. Anyone else like to share a story tonight? Are you coming? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm short. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Ainsley Grimes. Um, on behalf of Millers, um, all my Fiji boys who I work with. Um, yeah, Max. Um, on behalf of Millers, uh, we just wanted to say thank you um, and condol our condolences to the family and friends. Um, everybody loved Brandon at Millers. I mean, it, it was it was pretty silent on my last day that I worked there um, over this past weekend. Um, I want to say that definitely every day I walked in, I would look to my left at the host stand, and if I saw Brandon there, I knew it was going to be a good day, <laughs> um, especially if all my boys were there. Um, I knew it was going to be a hoot. Um, my manager, Dana, uh, she just wanted to say that this, the, the, the last moment she saw Brandon was just the perfect... It really just described him. It was, uh, we, were all, we were all messing around at the host stand, and it was my manager there. We were all just standing there, and Brandon stole her glasses and put them on, and she was like, you keep them, you keep them. They look better on you. And he just looked at her. He was like, nah, set them on her head. He was like, they'll always look better on you. And then he turned his hat backwards, and he walked right out. <laughs> and um, yeah. That, that moment right there, just, I don't know, every time I think of him, I think of that happy moment he was leaving, and that's just, that's always how I want to imagine him. Um, and I know, especially if every one of the Fiji boys are working and I'm working, it's never going to be the same. But um, we'll always remember him, and that's the good thing, is we have all those fond memories at work, and Max complaining about how nobody does their job when they're bussing tables. <laughs> yeah, he, he always, and, and I was actually going to be his trainer for when he moved up to a server. I was so excited. But 
Um, yeah, like I said, on behalf of Millers, we love you guys, um, and we love him, and we miss him, and we hope the best for every single one of you guys. This is on. Hello. Hi, um, my name is Emily Swartstrom. Um, I represent Sigma Kappa Sorority here on campus. Um, to the family and to the brothers of Fiji, my deepest condolences. Um, I didn't know Brandon super well. Um, I'm not going to pretend that I did. I was debating on even coming up here, but um, I know that if I were put in this position, I would want to hear it. So, um, to that. Um, Brandon was in my COM 122 class in fall of 2019. Um, I actually sat next to him. Uh, I proofread some of his papers. <laughs> so, um, he was always super, super outgoing. I'm a super, super extroverted person. So, um, I like having people to talk to. And he was always there to talk to me. And that was something that was really refreshing, just especially here at Riddle. I meet a lot of introverted people. Um, but he was very, like, on the first day, like, oh, hey, my name's Brandon. Like, who are you? What, like, what are you about? Like, and he was always willing to talk to me every single class period. I even, like, looked forward to him being there so I could talk to him. And it was, like, this breath of fresh air that someone actually could, like, carry a conversation. It was awesome. Um, I, I, I really appreciated that about him. I'm going to be honest, when I first heard that a student had passed away, I didn't recognize the name, but then I saw the picture, and I'm like, wait, I know him. <laughs> and it saddened me a little bit because I remember the person he used to be and I remember talking to him and enjoying talking to him and that's I'm a lot it's a lot to keep up with me but he was able to keep a conversation with me and I enjoyed talking to him so I I'm not gonna pretend I knew him super well but that is what I remember of him and from what I'm hearing from his family and his brothers that's pretty spot-on so thank you <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean in terms of Amy Riddle having introverts, but, you know, we have a lot of great people here tonight, so please, yeah, keep continuing. It's been said a lot tonight, but Brandon truly was master of the little things. Many brothers may have these big, grandiose stories having to do with him, but the thing the majority of us, I think, are going to miss the most are just those small little things, from talking to him in class to just hearing the impassioned speeches he gave, even about the smallest things, whether it's telling Brand or uh, Kyle off about being from the north of the state or anything having to do with Maryland, just any small thing, he just turned into an event. And just seeing that has a sparkle in his eye, from anything he had to do, you just remembered, because that's just the person he was. And someone I looked up to for most of my life told me, you can tell the quality of a person based off the number of people at the memorial. And just looking around today, I don't think I've ever seen this many people for someone so young, which tells you the quality of person he truly was. From the time we knew him from these four years here at the university, for a maximum four years, it just shows who he really is. And he will be truly missed on the deepest level from anything from just missing hearing his voice at the table to the big grandiose stories. Um, I wasn't originally going to come up here because I've got to speak about Brandon with a lot, uh, with a lot of people, including I got the privilege and honor of speaking with his family this morning. Um, but I kind of wanted to tell a story, or not not so much a story, but um, kind of what everyone has mentioned earlier of like those small conversations. Uh, he was um, uh, coming up into the fall. He was, uh, I was going to have the privilege of being able to live with him. Uh, and so he would come over to the house a lot. He would just, he just kept talking. And I always had fun. He could, he, he could just talk for hours. Um, but so one thing that always kind of stuck with me of whenever he was there, and yes, we all had fun, um, but uh, he was always so motivated of, of, of how he was always so set 
on what he was going to do. Uh, it, re it, it really was um, a privilege and an honor to be able to know him. Uh, he, kind of like how everyone else said, he always had his heart set on he was going to be Fiji president and no one was going to get in his way. Uh, and, it was, and it was always really funny because he would kind of like explain the cabinet of, of, of exactly who he wanted to lead. Um, and so he would name through a few people and he's like, Sean, I want you to be treasurer, which was really awkward because I'm graduating. Uh, but he had it stuck in his mind that I was going to do it. Um, and I... Uh, it's those little talks of having him come over and talk about his future that I'm, I'm truly going to miss. And I, it is from the bottom of my heart that I am truly sorry. Because um, he was loved and he truly will never be forgotten. Thank you. Who would else like to share a story? Oh, there's more people in here than I thought. I'm sorry, I didn't see the other floors. Um, I wasn't going to come up and speak, but you guys kept asking for stories, and the only one that really came to mind was the fact that uh, a couple weeks ago, I dropped a hot dog on the floor, and Brandon White picked it up and ate it, not breaking eye contact. <laughs> and if that doesn't sum up the kind of person that he is, that he's just, I think out of all of us, he really understood what it was meant to be alive and live this life. And he had a certain simplicity and poise of friendship, welcoming personalities, and just, he was just the kind of person that you knew that when you talked to him, you were speaking directly to his soul. And that's not easy to do wearing your heart on your sleeve like that, but I think it should really inspire all of us to do kind of more of what Brandon did for all of us. No matter how you were feeling, no matter how left out you were, no matter if you had nothing in common with him, he went out of his way to check up on you, to welcome you to things, or, you know, and I guess in a lot of our cases, to try to convince us to drink some Blue Four loco. <laughs> and so I, I think a lot of us don't really have the words to say, but I think the best thing we can do coming back from this is just knowing that he truly was one of, I think, the best people I ever met. And I think we should all just take a little page out of his book because even though he's a couple years younger than me, I truly don't know if I'll ever live as much as he ever did. Thank you. All right, hi guys. Um, wow, leave it to be white to make me actually public, like talk in public when I'm like terrified of it. But that's just the influence he has, and I want to cherish his memory. Um, so, uh, my name is Daniel Buchanan. Some of you may know me, some of you may not. And then there are those who probably know me as that one kid who isn't affiliated with Greek life, but is always in the SJ suite. Um, and I wouldn't change that for the world, because because of that decision, I got to meet a person as cool and special and unique and truly amazing as B. White. <laughs> um, now, I have two memories, two fond memories of B. Um, Brandon. One was a while back where, first of all, George, that speech, I thought you were talking directly to me. Like, I'm the type of person that would much rather stay at home if I have an exam than go party. But for that one specific night, they um, called me and I decided to go. And of course, B. White was there. Now, the party was about to end, and you know, B. White's just like a combustion chamber. He's just always going. Uh, a group of them decided that they wanted to have more fun and go out later, so they were going to get an Uber. Um, of course, I was going to go home, because I'm done. But he looked on me. I just remember him looking at me dead in the eye, and he's like, where are you going? I'm like, um, home. He's like, no, come on, get in the Uber. I'm like, uh, I, no, I want to go home. He's like, uh, no. We're going. I'm like, all right, cool. I, I like remember him walking away, and I like did um, one of the office turns. I looked at the wall. I was like, is this kid insane? Like, he's actually insane. But let me go nonetheless. 
Best decision I ever made. That Uber ride was the most fun I've ever had. Having someone like him croak in my ears while singing was just, first of all, awful for my ears, but just an amazing, but just an amazing memory overall. And then upon getting um, to the destination, he realized he didn't have his ID, so he couldn't even do anything. So, and then I remember like turning away and I'm like, all right, this kid is actually crazy. And we looked at him, he's like, what are you going to do? He's like, I'm fine, I'm just gonna go home. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and I was like, all right, you do you. Just make it home safely. And he did. Um, and then the last memory I have of B.Y., the last time I spoke to him, was in the um, SGA suite where uh, we were all with our friends, because I have a few friends in Fiji, uh, and I love them to death. And uh, they all had class, and they left and walked away, and they left B. White and I um, sitting down. And I don't know, uh, we just started talking, and he just started unloading, and you know, you guys say he had a wall around him. I could see that wall, but for some reason he just opened up, and I, I was there to listen. I, I love hearing people's stories. And he told me, you know, like growing up and the childhood and everything. And I was just like blown away that somebody could go through all of this and still achieve so much and be such a great person and evidently touch so many lives. And to his family and especially his mom, let me just tell you, he loved you, loved you. He made me cry in that suite. And I mean, there's no crying in the club, but I was, I was, I was like pouring, pouring tears in there. Uh, but yeah, he loves you guys. He loves his mom. He loves you to death. And his memory is going to live on with all of us forever and ever. And thank you for bringing him here. Thank you for allowing me to meet him. He was a truly unique and amazing person. And I will never forget B. White. May his soul rest in peace. I certainly want to hear from the family in just a second, but does anyone else have a, we have a story else they want to share? You want to? Oh, okay, great. Hi, just a short little thing. I was checking on in on one of his brothers the other day and we were sitting in his backyard and we were just kind of running through the semester and talking and um, as soon as we brought up your son's name, the sun came out <laughs> and um, the wind stopped and the sky turned amber and the trees and leaves just looked absolutely gorgeous and I think in that exact moment, <laughs> one of his brothers that I was talking to said, yep, that's him. <laughs> And I truly believe that he is in a much better, beautiful place now. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, I think you all had shared. You wanted to possibly share some words? Is that? Oh, I'm sorry. There's still someone someone's up there still? Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so I met B. White about two months ago. Uh, I ran for Diamond Girl, and he was one of the coaches in one of the other teams. Well, I made an enemy very early on because, as the brothers have said, he was nothing but persistent. His team had all of these things that came up constantly every week. You heard about something new. But every week you saw him with a smile on his face, being like, this is what I'm doing to get the sisters going. And constantly I was telling my coaches, I'm like, this is what B. White's doing, this is what B. White's doing. Like, we got to keep up, we got to keep up. Like, it was like constant fear. And it got to the point where like, I was telling my sisters, I was like, we have to have him as a coach next semester. Like, like we have to, we have to. And the only reason why we raised so much money was because of him, like hands down, like there's no way, like my team, like we literally texted all the time being like, we have to keep up. And one day we were at dinner actually, tacos, because he was like, I want to get to know all the teams. Like that, that's why I'm doing this. So I went to tacos with him, Ricardo, Andre, and a couple other people. And the entire time, he was telling me what I could do to raise more money. Like, the entire time, what they had done, and how, like, we could go back to those people, too, that he believed that they would donate to us. And so, 
honestly, there's no way we would have raised nearly as much money without him. And if that doesn't show the persistence that he had, then I don't know. Then. You guys ready? Hmm. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. I've had a straight face until I got here. And the amount of love and support that this school, uh, Brandon's new home, has brought through all of the brothers, through the administration that allowed him here. We as a family appreciate all of you. Um, we know it is a great loss to you all, just as it is to our family. Brandon was unique, that is for sure. So, as I was stating to someone earlier, when someone, any one individual has a home life and then they have a college life at home, Brandon was the same way. Um, <laughs> he would pace the floor, he was competitive in every single thing that he did. He wanted to be involved in everything at school through his a primary to his middle school to his high school. Um, if his mother were up here, she could tell you billions of stories. <laughs> and everything that Brandon put her through um, with being able to succeed. So I would like to thank the Brotherhood and the administ administration especially for honoring his academic successes in this way. It means so much, I know, especially to his mother. Um, with such a short passing, um, she didn't want him to come and go out of this world with not having accomplished something. And it is such a healing for her to be able to be honored with his degree, and I just cannot tell you how much that means. So, as I stated at the beginning, I'm his cousin. To me, I have simple stories, like I was his competition at Scrabble. Brandon has only beat me one time in life, but yet he still came to my table at every opportunity he had to try and beat me. Or maybe he just came for the food. <laughs> so every Scrabble night was seafood night and Brandon could eat. But that smile when he came in, it was just, it's such love. And he was just a great individual to be around as I don't have to tell any one of you. With this outpouring, our family knows how much he was loved. And we do appreciate that. Um, the only other thing that stands out to me is with his mother, like with the competitiveness and how he was determined to be right about everything, we shared a story with some of the faculty earlier. So Brandon could get in trouble a lot, a lot, and with his mother, so just for instance, one time, he had his phone taken away from him as a punishment. So Brandon wouldn't go directly to his mother and face her. He would write her letters. And he would say to my judge and my jury, this is my case. You need not take my phone because I have no means of communication with you. It's not a good idea to take my phone because I'm in all of these clubs and all of these um, competitions with robotics and whatnot, and I need to communicate with this, these people. So, and then at the bottom of the letter, he would get to it and he said, he would say, so in conclusion, um, am I sorry for what I did? Yes and no, or will I do it again? 
I probably will. Probably will. Um, and he would just plead his case, and he was just determined. So by the end of the punishment, she had forgot what she had um, punished him for initially, and he just got his phone back. So that's just the type of person he was. Um, his sister, his elder sister, his younger sister is here. His elder sister was unfortunately not able to come. She is a new mom. And as much as she would have liked to have been part to this, she was just not able. And she did want me to let you all know, even though that you know he was a kind spirit, he was, one, he was the best brother, and he was the best uncle to her newborn child, Lucas. And I just wanted to make mention for her and speak for her. And then his, his little sister, Alyssa, is here, and she has something that she'd like to say about her big brother. So on that, I'll let her speak. But thank you again for having us. And it is all our loss, and our hearts go out to you as well. Thank you. Brandon was, he was just amazing. He was always there when I needed him. He always knew what to say at the very moment. The, the best memory I have of him was every time he came home, we would just sit at the table and we would have a conversation for like three or four hours and he always opened up to me and it was just amazing how we could share our secrets and we were there for each other and he was really the best brother ever. Like, I miss him so much and I wish he, I wish he was still here so I could tell him how proud of, of him I am. Cause he is so amazing and he really did make a really big impact in my life. And I know he loved all of y'all. He talked about y'all all the time. Every time he came home, that's all I heard. <laughs> he even showed me a movie that he was making for y'all of all the memories and everything. And he, he just nonstop talked about y'all. He loved y'all. And I, I thank y'all for being there for him and giving him the support. It means a lot. So thank you all for being here as well. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Marie, for sharing. Thank you for sharing your son with us. We're so glad. Are we able to dim the lights a little bit? And some of you may have a, a candle. I'd like for as, our, as we close tonight, if you have a candle or can be near someone just to dim the lights a little and see if we're able to do that as we do so. Go ahead and turn your, if you have a light, go ahead and turn it on. Marie, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing, sharing your son. As the lights get darker, we nevertheless have the light in our hands. And I'd like to, as we close, be all to think about your memories of Brandon. And people have talked about how you keep a person alive. That's what the light in your hand symbolizes. I want you to have this light now, to see the light in your own hand, the light in the hands of those all around. It's both yours individually, but also the community's responsibility. And you talk about bringing your son 
Remember, it's bringing your son, the next generation, to see a shirt with his name. So I want you to remember Brandon, but I also want you to remember how he made you feel. If I've heard correctly tonight and listened to the way he listened, the way he talked, the way he pushed people to excel, the way he was a friend, the way he loved, it sounds like he made you feel human. So remember this night, remember a man who made you feel human. Remember Brandon. And remember that you have in your hand the ability to do the same for someone else. You have the ability to be a Brandon for the next person you meet, the next person you share a ride with, the next person in a class sitting next to a, cla a classmate, just say hi, introduce yourself. You can be the Brandon for the next person. So go forth with this knowledge that you've met a good man. He's come into your life. Know that you have blessed him. As you're saying, he talked about everybody here. Know that you've blessed him as he blessed you. Thank you for coming. Go in peace. Let all God's children say, Amen. I believe we have some, some refreshments. If you'd like, we want to thank the SGA and Sodexo for providing this tonight. Um, thank you all for coming. This means a great deal. It's so important. Thank you. Go in peace.